Okay, here's our dome. It's a 40 foot spherical dome. We've got four squares marked on it. The first square, we're gonna do the 22 and the nine millimeter. The next square, we're gonna do the 12 gauge slug, the 30-30, and the 30-06. We'll get a good, good range to see if there's any penetration at all. Do the nine millimeter now. We're gonna start it on the concrete blocks. We've got two different rounds we're gonna shoot. The first round is gonna be a hollow point, 147 grain. It's a personal protection brand. And the second shot will be a full metal jacket, 115 grain. Next we're going to shoot this 400 grain slug out of the 12 gauge shotgun. We're going to do this at 10 yards. Now we're going to shoot with the 30-30, 170 grain bullet. Okay, now we're going to shoot with the 30 odd six. This is a 180 grain bullet, and we're going to shoot the block first and then the dome.
Here we're at the conclusion of our test. We've shot six different guns at the dome. None of them have penetrated, which is pretty amazing considering the power of some of these rifles. The 30 out six is by far the most powerful, and uh, we've got no penetration. 30 30, 12 gauge with the slugs in it, we've got nothing on any of these. It's interesting to see here on the higher powered rifles, it's kind of a delamination that happened right here above the bullet. No penetration. The destruction at Briarwood and Plaza Towers Elementary Schools on May 20th has put school safety in the spotlight. Districts all over the state are asking, what can we do to keep students safer during severe weather? Well, on the plains of southwestern Oklahoma, one school district says it's way ahead of the curve. Tonight, we go inside what they call a tornado-proof school. Geronimo, Oklahoma. A wide spot in the road off I-44, just south of Lawton, a small town that if you're not paying attention, you just might miss. But what is sure to catch your attention as you drive by are these unusual dome-shaped buildings. They may look funny, but their design just might save lives during a tornado. So there's classrooms on both sides of these walls, and then, of course, the lockers line the walls. Those strange-looking structures are actually Geronimo's high school and junior high. Monolithic domes, five connected pods, as they call them, built to withstand an EF-5 tornado. Classrooms start peeling off. It's like a pie. School board member Michael Johnson took us on a tour. This is the gym. What makes the curved roof safer than a traditional square building? Johnson compares it to a basketball. It has no real sharp edges for the wind to push on. Uh, it deflects a lot of the of Mother Nature, of Oklahoma's wind. Um, and it's entirely made of concrete. Concrete walls, floors, and even that strange round roof. They built a big fan in one of these doors, and they just pumped that trampoline up. And then they sprayed concrete, layer after layer after layer, for weeks. Four years since moving in, students and teachers have no fear when the tornado sirens sound. You can just think, hey, I can stay in class. There's no windows I have to worry about, and there's no panic. But most schools don't have that luxury. Very few have shelters, and adding one to an existing school, that's an expensive proposition. But weather experts say we really shouldn't worry. Schools are actually fairly safe places to be for kids in Oklahoma. NOAA research meteorologist Dr. Harold Brooks says just 13 children have died in schools during tornadoes in Oklahoma's entire history, including the seven from Plaza Towers Elementary. And there have probably been more people killed going to and from school than there have been killed in tornadoes. So even though it's a terrible thing to have happen, it's not that big of a threat. For the 150 junior high and high school students at Geronimo, it's a risk they're glad they don't have to take. Dr. Brooks agrees monolithic domes are a safe option for schools. Johnson says they're also energy efficient and cheaper to build. Other school districts in the state have built multi-purpose monolithic buildings instead of entire schools, a realistic option for larger districts. A quest for a comfortable environment that satisfies, shelters, and pleases. After more than 25 years of designing and building monolithic dome homes, we are convinced that there are as many ideas of what a dream home is as there are people who want one. What it boils down to is what you, the planner of your dream home, desire. You may be dreaming of an artistic structure that has symmetry, balance, and grace. You may be dreaming of a home that can withstand natural disasters and save you money. Whatever you long for in a dream home can be achieved in a monolithic dome home. Monolithic domes are beautiful in every sense of the word. They have an outer beauty that immediately strikes the eye of the beholder. And the monolithic dome's innate strength, cost effectiveness, and endless design possibilities create an inner beauty as well.
The initial cost of a monolithic dome is usually the same as that of a custom-built, conventional home of equal interior finish. However, the long-term and day-to-day -day costs of a monolithic dome will always be substantially lower. If you were to build a conventional home with materials used in the monolithic dome construction, you would spend vast amounts of money. It is the efficient shape and simple construction process that keeps the monolithic dome affordable. The monolithic dome is a superior structure built at conventional prices. Monolithic domes typically require about half as much energy to heat and cool when compared to conventional structures. These savings are achieved by using what we call the dome's thermal battery. Monolithic domes are built with reinforced concrete on the inside and polyurethane foam on the outside. The polyurethane foam acts as a barrier to outside weather changes, while the concrete absorbs temperature fluctuations inside the home. Lee and Cindy Quintens of Edgerton, Kansas, moved from a 1,400 square foot conventional home to a 2,700 square foot monolithic dome. But their energy bill did not increase, even though they had almost doubled their living space. Chuck and Louise Snyder, both native Alaskans, own a 3,000 square foot monolithic dome home. The home is heated by an in-floor radiant heating system, which is powered by an oil-fired furnace. In January 1999, temperatures plummeted to minus 52 degrees with the wind chill factor. One evening, Chuck noticed that the water was not as hot as it normally was, and by the next day there was no warm water at all. Upon checking the furnace, he discovered they were out of heating oil. At that point, their monolithic dome had been without heat for two days in sub-zero weather, but to their surprise, the temperature in the dome was still comfortable. Monolithic domes can also save money long-term with lower homeowners insurance premiums. When Don and Shirley Tuttle of Shamrock, Texas first looked into insuring their 2,600 square foot monolithic dome home, they were quoted an $800 annual premium. But a little education brought that premium down to just $174. The Tuttle simply had their insurer check into the fire and disaster resistance abilities of their monolithic dome. Most conventional U.S. homes are fire rated as combustible structures. One match and they're gone. Conversely, most monolithic dome homes are fire rated as non-combustible structures. They just don't burn. In the fall of 2002, a brush fire started about one mile away from Al and Ruth Braswell's home in Southern California. Temperatures that day were above the 100 degree mark and the fire spread rapidly. An on-the-scene fire captain told Mr. Braswell that if his home had been built from conventional materials, it would have burned to the ground. The fire captain also said that he had instructed his fire crew to break the doors down and take cover in the dome if they got into trouble. Amazingly, the fire went up the rise of the mountain, right over the top of the house, and caught on the other side of the dome. But damage to the Braswell home was mostly cosmetic. According to the Riverside County Fire Department, it took 696 firefighters, 87 engines, 26 hand crews, 2 bulldozers, 6 helicopters, 11 airplanes, and 3 days to finally extinguish the Bryant fire. Dr. Arnold Wilson, engineer and former professor at Brigham Young University, extensively studies and engineers monolithic domes. In a recent article, Dr. Wilson stated that a monolithic dome is probably the most disaster-resistant building that can be built today. After Hurricanes Aaron and Opal devastated their home in Pensacola Beach, Florida, Mark and Valerie Sigler began researching building techniques that would provide stability and protection. What they discovered was the monolithic dome. Because the dome will withstand hurricanes, tornadoes, 
storm surges, termites, rising energy costs, fires, and even earthquakes, the Siglers knew that it would be a true sanctuary, a place to come home to even after a hurricane. After finding overwhelming support from neighboring families and business owners, the couple applied for and received a grant from the Federal Emergency Management Agency to help pay for their new monolithic dome home. FEMA realized that funding a small portion of the structural costs of the disaster-resistant dome would reduce their liability and exposure to future claims. This beautiful beachfront home will be completed in 2003 and will be available to the public as a vacation rental property. More and more people are embracing the style of the monolithic dome. When Jim and Melanie Caslick began construction of Cloud Hidden, their new dome home in Asheville, North Carolina, some neighbors were skeptical. But once the home was in place and neighborhood property values quickly increased, any opposition faded. The Caslicks built a beautiful structure whose unassuming exterior and dramatic interior expedited the dome's acceptance into their upscale neighborhood. This monolithic dome home, designed by Larry Byrne, is another good example of the dome's unique beauty. Larry's wife, Mara Lee, was initially unenthusiastic about domes, but because Larry is vice president of design at Monolithic, she was able to see firsthand how you could make both the interior and the exterior become whatever you wanted. Mara Lee now readily admits that she loves the design of her home with its illusion of endless curves. Monolithic dome homes appeal to a select group of discriminating homeowners, people who want an outwardly beautiful structure, 